Hi, welcome to the session of speed control of DC shunt motor. As we know that factors controlling the motor speed n is proportional to V minus IA RA by 5. So, where uh, you know the difference in this potential V minus RA uh, if it is more the speed increases if the di potential difference between these two terms is less then speed increases. So, first method is a flux control method. So, we can control the speed by flux by you know uh, armature uh, rheostatic control and by voltage uh, applied voltage method and also one more method potential divider method. So, there are four methods basically to control the speed of a shunt motor. So, this is a simple uh, symbolic representation of a DC motor where is variation of flux on flux control method. So, look in when you look at this particular uh, you know circuit you can see that the armature uh, you know field is being connected to an external rheostat there is an addition of external rheostat to vary the flux in the field since this flux what I am talking in the denominator is a field flux so if I vary this field flux as n is pro you know, inversely proportional to 5 so if I increase 5 speed should increase and if I decrease this 5 speed should increase so to obtain this change in the you know flux we need to change the current in this field winding so to change this field winding as we know that shunt motor as long as the supply is constant the current in the shunt field is also constant and the field is also constant so thereby to vary the shunt current i need to insert an external resistance r to vary the shunt current so when you vary the shunt current ish the flux varies in the field so we know that as i said n is proportion inversely proportional to 1 by 5 so by decreasing the flux the speed can be increased and vice versa the flux of the dc motor can be changed as i said by changing ish with the help of a shunt field rheostat since ish is relatively small shunt field rheostat has to carry only a small current so which means i square r losses is small so that rheostat is small in size so coming to the next method armature or rheostatic control method in this method when speed below the no load speed are required if you look at it you know initially the speed would be at maximum so when you add a armature rheostat in series with the armature because it is armature control rheostatic control method so we need to add an rheostat in series with the armature to control the armature current and therefore, IA is proportional to, uh, you know, IA, RA, uh, you know, um, if you increase IA, the drop across this IA, RA increases. Therefore, the difference uh, also decreases uh, and the speed increases. So, the no load speed are required as the supply voltage is normally constant. So, the voltage across the armature is varied by inserting a variable resistance in series with the armature winding. So, the resistance of armature circuit increases, the PD, you know, this IA, RA, you know, decreases, therefore, the speed also decreases. So, with this, you can observe, we obtain a speed, speed below the normal speed. So, wherever the applications we require to obtain below normal speed, we can, we can you know, approach with this method. Now, coming to the third method, potential divider control. As in the previous uh, case, the below normal speed will not reach zero. So, in order to obtain the speed till zero, we go with another method that is potential divider method. So, the main disadvantages of the above method is being taken care in this potential divider control. So, the speed up to zero is not possible in the previous method to, because we need to insert a larger rheostat in series with the armature which is practically impossible. If the speed control from zero to the rated speed, from zero to rated speed is required, then we need to employ this potential divider arrangement as shown in this 
figure. So, the, when the voltage across the armature can be varied by varying this potential divider resistance. When the voltage across the armature starts increasing, as long as motor does not overcome the inertia and frictional torque, you know, this is the, you know, voltage required to in overcome inertia and frictional drop, uh, you know, drop. So, the speed of the motor remains zero. So, once it overcomes this drop, the speed, you know, starts, uh, you know, you know, the motor requires some voltage to start. Hence, the graph of the voltage and the rated speed does not pass through origin because there is some voltage is being used to overcome this inertia and friction drop. So, the advantages is it is easy and smooth speed control below normal speed whereas the previous method it is a speed control above normal speed is possible. Here below normal speed is possible. The potential divide arrangement rheostat can be used as a starter. So, there are disadvantages in this method as the entire armature circuit current passes through the external resistance, there are tremendous power loss. So, that is one disadvantage. Speed above rated speed is not possible. Due to large power loss, the method is expensive. So, the method needs expensive heat dissipation arrangement also. The fourth method is the applied voltage control method. So, if I want to change the applied voltage to the DC motor, if you look at this arrangement, I need to make a switchgear arrangement here for the motor armature where I can change the voltage across this armature you know by changing the voltage here from plus 20 to 20 to minus 220 whereas the field is fixed here it is fixed between 0 and 220 so the field is given with a constant voltage whereas the armature is being varied from plus 220 to minus 220 within you know switch gear arrangement so, different working voltages can be applied through this method with the help of this switch gear and various values of armature voltage and corresponding arrangement can be used to obtain the speed control. So, the advantages is it gives wide range of speed control as we can vary the armature voltage you know through this switch gear arrangement. Speed control in both the direction can be achieved that is above normal and below normal. So, uniform acceleration as also can be obtained. So, arrangement is expensive as provision of various auxiliary equipment is necessary and overall efficiency is low. Thank you for watching.